Tar amps, are they cheaply made? Are they horror amps? Are they excellent amps? Are they great amps? Or are they the go-to amps? One of the biggest questions in car audio right now, man, is tar amps a good amp? Do they produce good power? Are they cheaply made? Today, I'm gonna go ahead and give you my personal review on them. Uh, I've been running tire amps for almost uh, a year now. You know, we started off with just one 3000 in my other truck. Um, but you know, if you guys have been watching the videos, you know we probably got 95% of amps in my Silverado build, all tire amps. And I'm gonna go ahead and give you my personal review. Stick around, it's gonna be a great video. Good information from my point of view. Maybe this will help you out. You know picking an amp that best suits you um, everybody has their own preference on what they like um, what their budget is and everything and i'm going to go ahead and give you my honest opinion on these guys right now but man we're trying to reach this 5k subscribers by the end of the year and listen i got a treat for you guys if we manage to get to 5k subscribers by the last day before january 1st me and my friend nino he has a chevy tahoe uh, he has four Machete Def Bond subs on AK Tar Amp. And me and him will be battling it out to see whose truck is louder versus the 412 E-Class Sundown subs on the 5K versus his truck. Tower amps, man, listen. Um, I was never a fan of them. Uh, I always had people, you know, talk about them, you know, say all these good things about them. Um, they had them in their vehicle and I was never a big fan of them until I actually started using because, you know, my curiosity was all like, man, let's try one amp, you know, before we actually give an honest opinion and then, you know, we can go from there. You guys watched, man, we built a single cab with four tens in it. We put the base series 1200.1 inside that truck for four tens kicker CVRs. When we fired that guy up, man, I was like, all right, not bad, you know, for, for four tens on 1200 watts, man, this thing is banging, you know, not bad, not bad. Um, but we had only done um, a sub amp, you know. We later ended up getting a MD 3000.1 for my Trailblazer because my other amp had, you know, took a dump on it. And I wanted to put 3000 watts on my 10s. So I was like, man, let me get this MD 3000.1, you know, yada, yada, yada. And we put it on. Uh, it sounded pretty good. It actually woke the mids up. It gave me the strong mid sound that, you know, I was looking for, which was really, really, really good. So then... You know, we kept that amp inside there, we kept going, and then once we started building my Silverado build that you guys have been watching, um, I was all like, man, you know what, we're gonna do all tear amps so we can really see what these guys can do. Here is my MD5000.1 uh, 2 ohm. Uh, it has is dual fans. Look, you see, that is loud. That's the fan going off, and it's not as loud as people make it seem like. You know, I don't know if maybe it's this series of the amps, but this is as loud as I've heard these amps get with the fan going. Um, it's it's doable, you see what I'm saying? Uh, at least it's, I know that the amp's doing what it's supposed to do and take care of itself before it actually blows up, man. Um, it has Ock H input, but obviously we got the, um, what are these things called? I mean, I forgot the name of the, the reducers. I think that's, I don't know, I could be wrong. Uh, so I actually got uh, two Ock H going ran into this guy. Uh, very good. It fits right in there. It looks like it was designed for one day to have the reducers inside there. It comes with your on, your clip, and a protect light on it so you can see what, you know, is going on with the amp. And as well, they do come with clip light indicators that you can put in the front of your car so you can really keep an eye on them so you know how high to turn your gains up and down on your sub knobs or, you know, EQ knobs or whatever you have going on. Are they cheaply made is the next thing. My honest opinion on on are they really cheaply made I really don't think so because I think they put a good amount of thought in the design and the components that make it perform that they do 
just look at this guy man look at it man it's nice white with a center black strip with the nice logo um it lets you know right off the bat so 5000.1 and on the amp itself it tells you what type of amp and you know the ohm loads that it is the the volume knobs for some reason a lot of people don't like them they say that they're cheaply made you know they do have a little bit of play with them but honestly if you are a car audio installer or if you know you're gonna do it at your house and you know you don't take it to a shop to get it done man there is a tool for every job out there you know why you know take the time and twist it with your fingers when you can get a small little screwdriver small flathead stick inside the flat area import the port that it has inside there that's made for it and man use that screwdriver to go ahead and adjust your amp don't use your fingers you'll probably damage it more uh, or more likely to ruin it instead of just getting yourself a small little flathead screwdriver stick it in the input on the amp and man let, let the screwdriver do the adjusting for you you know what I'm saying that's what the, the tools are made for for you to handle and do things properly now let's get into pricing if you walk into your local car audio shop or if you're online shopping for you know an amp that you need for your car um, you know you just type in car amplifiers all these amps will come in here and you know amps can get pretty pricey you see what I'm saying so you know when you go in to start looking for an amp some people may have a budget some people may not have a budget maybe someone's trying to get a good bang for their buck me whenever I went to start getting these amps for my truck I had uh, I, ar I already knew that I want to get a tower amp for the truck now I needed to find which one best fit you know what I had going on in my truck subwise so I had the choice whether to do the MD5000.1, the Smart Base 5K, or just the regular Base Series 5K. So I did a little bit of research, watched YouTube videos, of course, um, of all these amps on the dynos, and then I watched what each amp produced on that dyno and how much power, and then I chose, you know, the amp that I felt that was going to be best for my, you know, subwoofer setup. I could have went with the Smart 5K or the Base 5K, but it was going to actually produce way too much power, you know, for the subs that I wanted to put in my truck, which is the E-Class Series Sundowns. But when I saw the dyno on the MD Series, uh, you know, it produced the power that I was looking for. Um, and, you know, it was, it was in the range that, you know, I was trying to, you know, stay in with the amp, although I really didn't have a budget. If I would have had to pick the Smart 5K, I would have done it. But I just felt that the the MD5000.1 was definitely for me so that's why I went ahead and chose it and the price was great I think when I bought it it was probably like four something uh, 397 somewhere in that area but to buy a 5000 watt amp in the $400 range man that's like fantastic I am a big fan of having matching amps and when I went to go look for amps for my truck so I could figure out what I wanted to buy there was pretty much no other company that gave me the ohm loads that I was looking for um, power range and the price I was looking for that all was the same brand I'd either had to buy one brand or get another brand and put them together because of power ohm loads and everything but man tar amps definitely gives you the options to get different ohm loads uh, they got good power for you know choices what you want to do um, they all match they're all you know the same thing so I feel like that's a big bonus with the Tar Amps brand, you know what I'm saying? That they give you pretty much, if you want a sub amp, man, we got the, the mids and high amp that's going to go with it. Or if you want um, a mid amp, we got the other amp that goes good for it. So pretty much they give you a good, awesome, you know, choices they give you in order to pick your amps. So that's really good on their part. I really like that about them. <laughs> There's probably other amp companies that have 5,000 watts, and you're talking about over, you know, seven, dollars $800. You see what I'm saying? But for the price that I found this MD amp, you know, I was sold. You know, I got to get it. It was a good-looking amp. Um, I knew other people that had um, tar amps for their bass, and they sounded phenomenal. So I was like, man, I'm just going to go ahead and give this guy a shot and see what it does. And listen, I was very, very impressed. And which will, towards the end of the video, man, I'm going to give you all a, another bass demo. Uh, man, I never get you know tired of hearing the bass in my truck man it is amazing I love it um, the setup's good the amp does you know it what it's supposed to do and you guys are gonna see it right now it's a little bit early so hopefully the neighbors don't get mad but man you know oh well you know they'll, they'll learn to love it you can call them cheap uh, you know you can love them 
man for the price that these tar amps are man you can never go wrong whatsoever you know what i'm saying respect your sound system and it will last you a good amount of time people that don't respect their sound system yeah it's just a matter of time before it breaks on you i definitely abuse my sound system but i respect it at the same time you know what I'm saying there's a time and a place for everything just because I have all the power and a very loud sound system doesn't mean I have to ride with it blaring everywhere I go. I mean, I do have my moments where it's at very long, low volume. Or I don't even drive the truck at all. You know what I'm saying? But when it's time to get down, listen, these Terra amps, they do their job. You see what I'm saying? They, they put in that work. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, as funny as it sounds, they've seen all the hard work and sleepless nights I put into my build. So they're going to be like, all right, man, we're going to be good to this guy. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're going to jam today, you know, and they've yet to, you know, let me down. My truck, my truck with all the abuse and the eight hours that I had playing. And one day when we went to the Florida Classics, the eight hours straight, I had this thing beaten. My truck only went into protect one time. And once I turned off the truck, let it sit for 10 minutes, we got back on it. I just backed down the sub gain a little bit. And it never went into protect and listen these amps stayed cool i cannot sit here and tell you that these amps got super hot super hot the mids and highs were at full tilt you see what i'm saying the sub i had to back it down a little bit so i can play a little longer but the bass was still there and never once not even the mids and highs or none of that stuff ever punked out these amps never went into protect they only really go into protect when you're trying to do more than what they're supposed to do if you have everything set right um, have good battery power, good voltage, whatever you want to call it, man, these amps are going to produce the best um, that, you know, you can ask for. You see what I'm saying? Should you buy tire amps? Yes, I really recommend that you do. If they were not good amps, man, all these demo base vehicles that I personally seen whenever I went to the Florida Lifted Truck Show and they had the car audio section, so many builds it was ridiculous that were running tower amps you see what i'm saying i was actually pretty amazed myself as much as hate that they get on them here and there and i don't know why people you know hate on them but man these things are you know they're on the boss level i'm not even gonna lie i really do love them i recommend that you guys get them i know you guys will not be disappointed okay so i really my neighbors are gone and the neighbors after them are gone so maybe i can give a quick little bass demo so we'll see a few moments later. Man, that thing is beaten, man. For it being cheap sundown subs and that and it only being an MD5K tar amps, man, that thing is booming. Man, I started smelling a little bit of voice coil, man, but hey, you, that's that's the price you gotta pay to boom, man. So at tar amps. Tar amps definitely get them, man. They are my the go-to amp, guys. It should definitely be your go-to amp. Price is awesome, quality is awesome, output is awesome, the looks are awesome. I, I don't have nothing bad to say. Drop down in the comments, let me know what you guys think. 
Tar amps, are they cheaply made? Are they horror amps? Are they excellent amps? Are they great amps? Are, are they the go-to amp, man? Drop down in the comments. I'm curious to see what you guys got to say. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Whew, man, that bass, man, I love bass. I'm not even gonna lie. I love it. It's, 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 it's giving me like my euphoria is going up high right now, man. Like, I can't even talk. I love bass. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, man, drop the comments. Let me know. Like, definitely subscribe to the channel, man, because we're going to get that uh, bass um, sound off going with me and my homeboy. He's got 412 Def Bond Sums on AK MD Tower Amps versus my 5K on 412 Sundown Subs, man. We'll make it happen. You guys can make it happen. Subscribe to the channel because, man, that's going to be epic. I hope you guys have a good day. Uh, man, stay safe out there doing uh, Christmas shopping, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.